Hey guys, what's going on and welcome to today's video in deck tech for Legends of Runeterra. Today we're going to be talking about a very, very good deck. Uh, one of the best decks in the format. Um, kind of. It's a, a variation of one of the best decks in the format. It's a Draven deck. Uh, but it's specifically Draven Swain instead of what is, in my opinion, the best or at least one of the best decks, uh, Draven Ezreal. Uh, now before I talk too much about Draven Swain versus Draven Ezreal. Let's go and look at the deck really quick. Okay, here we are. Welcome to Draven Swain. Now, first off, why play Draven Swain versus Draven Ezreal? Uh, we are trading off our very good early game, the uh, strong early game that Draven Ezreal gives us for a little bit of a stronger late game and for a better matchup against Zoe Lee Sin as well. Uh, if you don't understand how that works, uh, be, well, uh, just, it's simple because by playing Swain Leviathan and having the Swain Leviathan combo get set up, we're able to stun the uh, enemy Lee Sins, and then if they can't attack in, they can't do the whole overwhelm dragon kick, take you down from 20 in one turn combo uh outside of that the deck is pretty much almost exactly the same it plays very similar to draven Ezreal, just a little bit weaker in the early game like i said uh so we'll go and talk about all of the cards really quick um there's not going to be too much to talk about here i think because there's nothing too crazy in the deck uh first off we have thermogenic beam two copies because it's kind of a little awkward right now in the meta uh, but still just a really good uh, removal spell, really good in the late game against big stuff. Decent in the early game if you want to kill a Zoe on turn one. Uh, next up, Ravenous Flog. This card is just so efficient. One mana for four damage. Sure, you have to have the, the enemy be stunned or damaged, but that's not a big ask. Uh, three Rummages because we're generating so many either fleeting cards or just randomly generated cards or just generated cards like the spin Spinning Axes. Uh, it's pretty much just a one-mana draw, too. Uh, speaking of which, Ballistic Bot is uh, one of the cards that generates random cards. Sorry, I keep saying random. Uh, fleeting cards that is fodder for discard cards. Uh, also, if we ever have spare mana, we can always just throw out the Ignition for a little extra ping. Uh, again, helps level up Swain. If you have a level up Swain, the ping from Ignition is also technically a stun, so very nice synergy right there. Uh, and then eventually, if the Ballistic Bot just stays on the field, eventually it will get so big it can threaten the uh, opponent's life total itself. Um, sure, we'll still have a small health pool, small health pool, but say like it becomes like a six three or seven three. That's very scary. Uh, next up, House Spider. Not much to talk about this card. Just a very good, early, efficient two drop. Two mana for three, three worth of stats over two bodies is just really nice. Um, yeah, not much about it. Only two because it's kind of a mediocre card. You really only want to draw one of them in the early game and then none in the late game because it doesn't do much in the late game. Uh, three Mystic Shots. Not much to talk about. Mystic Shot is probably one of the best PNZ cards in the game because two mana for two damage is just so good and efficient. Uh, it's also just a little extra face damage if you need it. Arachnoid Sentry, uh, very, very good card. Combos well with Flock. Um, also very good at stopping your opponent's tempo. They play like a big unit like Captain Farron. You play Sentry. They pretty much can't attack in with that because of the stun. Great card. Uh, Death's Hand, just basically more Mystic Shots, but they also ping the face, so that's nice too because of Swain. Uh, Draven, not much to talk about him here. Everyone knows Draven is good. He's kind of really, really strong with the discard card, so uh, yeah. Draven plus other champions is a good start for building any deck. Uh, Scorched Earth over Noxian Guillotine as well right now because Scouts is popular and while the deck is already favored against scouts um it's not that bad to run scorched earth over guillotine because there aren't too many decks where we want guillotine anyway and because of that it just lets us win even harder against scouts and the few tom soraka decks as well i guess 
Um, and I guess you could also use it against the like two people still playing deep. But let's be real, no one really plays deep. So yeah, Scorched Earth over Guillotine. You could, uh, if you don't really care too much about scouts and you think you can beat scouts even if they have a landmark, a Grand Plaza on the field, you could play like two Guillotines or even do a 1-1 one, one split, one Guillotine, one Scorched Earth. I don't think you should go up to three Scorched Earths. It's a little bit uh, awkward to play this card, but it's still a good card. And then we have some treasures. Uh, you could go up to three copies or you could play two copies. I like two copies. Uh, really just use this to discard a spinning axe or an ignition, or if you're desperate enough, maybe in the late game, like a house spider, like a real card that's just not good anymore. Uh, good, um, decent early game curve is a turn one ballistic bot, turn two ballistic bot, sorry, into a turn three sump treasure, very strong, good board presence, um, gets you cycling through the deck. Next up, we got Chump Wump just here for a relatively sizable body that gives us more discard fodder. The Mushroom Clouds are actually kind of cute too. If we play them and put them in our opponent's deck and we have a leveled up Draven, sorry, a leveled up uh, Swain on the field, the uh, the Puff Caps, the Mushrooms, will actually be a stun. So that's cool. That's very cute. Uh, it won't come up too much, but it's something to keep in mind. And then we got Tribeam. Tribeam is just a huge tempo card kill something develop the board and then maybe even attack in with that thing that you played or use it to block um if you really want to try and squeeze out a little bit higher of a win percentage you can even look up uh specifically what kind of units come out at what cost and decide if you want to try and play for certain units for example um Going from a four drop to a five drop is a huge jump in value. And another example is 10 drops are on average worse than nine drops in terms of raw stats. So those are some things you might want to keep in mind as you uh, play this deck in any tri-beam deck, really. And then we have Swain. Um, whole reason we're playing him again, like I said, is the powerful late game of Swain Leviathan. Uh, we still have one Captain Farron because Captain Farron's just a nutty card, but compared to Leviathan, yeah, we're only going to play one Captain Farron. And then we have Leviathan itself. Uh, just a nice card, puts your opponent on a clock, forces them to deal with this, draws Swain. Uh, a little weak to Equinox, and because Zoe's popular, you really need to be careful of Zoe and her super cool star charts. Also, um, Spacey Sketcher is somewhat popular too, so they might get Equinox anyway. But if an opponent cannot deal with Leviathan, then you're probably going to win the game. So, that's the deck. Very fun deck, very powerful deck, and I would highly recommend this as a deck to climb with if you are wanting to play Ezreal Draven, but you're seeing a lot of Lee Sin. So, as I was saying, um... I lost my train of thought here completely. Ah, yes, uh, because uh, the reason I recommend this if you want to play Ezreal Draven but want to climb and you're seeing a lot of Lee Sin is, like I've said numerous times, um, this play is pretty much exactly the same as Ezreal Draven's. Mulligans are very similar. Play style is very similar. But, again, we traded some of our early game for the stronger late game against Lee Sin. Um, a good Lee Sin player might be able to play around Leviathan-Swain combo by playing... Lee Sin on their turn after the Leviathan Swain stuns went off, but then they don't have as much mana, and then you yourself might be able to Arachnoid Sentry that turn as well to play around that, so just basically think about how your opponent can deal with that. And of course, there's also Equinox, which makes you a very sad boy. Uh, anyway, though, uh, enough talking. Let's get into a couple of games. All right, here we go. It looks like I'm against a Zoe deck, specifically an Invoke deck. Um, against this deck, I want to find things like Death's Hand, basically early game, uh, some Mystic Shots, Dravens as well would be nice. Uh, but yeah, a way to deal with, okay, that's a lot of Mystic Shots, but uh, a way to deal with Zoe really quickly is nice. All right, this is a good hand, and they don't have a Zoe on turn one, so I will be able to kill Zoe and make it so they don't have attack. I will take the two damage. Now, just like Ezreal Draven, we have to be very careful about our health pool because we don't have a single point of healing, so every single point of damage is permanent. So this two damage I've taken, and this two damage I'm about to take again, is permanent. I could Mystic Shot this here. If they play a unit, I will play probably Draven, maybe Arachnoid Sentry, depending on what they play. 
or even Ballistic Bot. That makes me want to play Arachnoid. Not Arachnoid. That make, actually, no, that does kind of make me want to play Arachnoid Sentry. So I have options here. I can either play Ballistic Bot, which is nice, or Draven, which is also nice. I think I'm just going to play Draven. Don't think about it too hard. Take the damage here. Block the 2 1 if they attack in. It's an obvious Pale Cascade. If they do that, I have Mystic Shot in case they want to try that. And next up, I will just, uh, on my turn, I will just open attack. Yeah, this is a Pale Cascade here. I will open attack in here next turn. Play Sump Dredger. Hey, look at that. It's the Pale Cascade I called. Uh, as I was saying, though, no. uh, Mystic Shot. There's nothing they can really do here to stop this. This is good for me. Sure, they got to draw a card, so it's not that bad for them, but they wasted a combat trick and they didn't even get any damage on Draven. So that's great. Uh, yeah, just a simple open attack here. Get another uh, spinning axe for more discard fodder. It's really good now, especially because we have a rummage in hand. I have two options here. Either play Sump Treasure or play Ballistic Bot. I think I'm just going to play the Dredger. I would really, really like to find a turn five Swain here. Would actually be really, really nice. Double Ballistic Bot. I'm not sure if I actually like that. I'm going to play one next turn, most likely. Because I will want the, uh, the fleeting stuff. Okay, that's nice. That's really nice. Not that many three drops left in hand for this Tri-Beam, but whatever. Okay, they're taking some turns off, it seems. Devil Priestesses. They could play, I guess, Travel. No, they can't play Traveler. They only have two mana. I guess they could still play Zoe. The only thing I'm worried about here is if they play Zoe into Sunblessed Vigor, I won't actually be able to deal with that. If they pass here, I think I will pass too. If they attack in with a 3-2, I block with my 4-3 just to get that out of the way. I might call their bluff. Ooh, Diana. Um, that is just a mystic shot right away. If this forces out another Pale Cascade, I have Death's Hand. It is another Pale Cascade. I will do this um, Death's Hand on defense whenever they attack in. They'll probably try to kill Draven here, I assume. Yep. Really got to kill Draven. Oh, this is a good block, too. They're really trying to kill Draven. It's fine. I do have to be careful again. Like I said, I can't actually deal with the late game of this deck. I actually think this might be a bad matchup. And the reason I can't deal with the late game is their late game is big celestial unit that they invoke into atrocity, which is why I need to keep my health, in my opinion, at least at 11. I would say is my aim. So here, I think I'll attack in like this. If they block here, I will uh, spinning axe, throwing away ignition, but I highly doubt they would block here. Maybe I would do that. Okay, they didn't block, that's good. And now I'll just rummage. I'll rummage away this uh, ignition and spinning axe. Maybe. That's a little bit of a problem. In fact, that's a really big problem. I am going to throw away ignition and spinning axe. I want to bank the mana, which is why I don't want to... Uh... Oh, that's really good. That's a huge draw. I need to... Uh... I will stun this and kill the elusive. That is very important right here, I think. So I've gotten rid of one of the invokes which is huge. I'm starting to grow the Tri-Beam, which is great. I'm, I don't have much spell mana now. Uh, if you have the option to play Ignition versus banking an extra spell mana, I would highly recommend just banking that extra spell mana because, like Ezreal Draven, we need a lot of mana because of our spells. So, spell mana is nice. Um, here... I could play Tri-Beam, but I think what I'm going to do 
is this to start with. See where we go from here. If they pass, I'll pass too. If they attack him like this, I'll do like this block. I could play around a third Pale Cascade. By pale, by uh, blocking this with a 2-2. Two -two. I'm going to try beam here, basically, in other words, is what I'm saying. But I think I want the 2-2. Uh, two -two. The 2-2 two -two does a little bit of damage. Most three drops are kind of bad, though, so this is not that great. But there are some decent three drops, like Shadow Assassin would be nice to find here. Do they actually have the third one? Wow, they actually had the third Pale Cascade. That's kind of nuts, in all honesty. Okay, that's pretty fine. And here, here is a good example. Like, I could play the Ignition here. I won't, though, because I want to bank the spell mana. By banking spell mana, I can bluff uh, Mystic Shot and still develop a Leviathan. Now, I will just attack him like this. They could block Draven, I guess, and play Hush with this. And if they do that, I'm very fine with that. I One, I have another Draven in hand, so I can just replay Draven eventually. But Draven has done his job. And two, it means, like, a Swain is probably not going to get hushed now. So now I just play a Leviathan and start to uh, go off. That's a little scary, though. That is a little scary. We can chump it with the 2-2. Two -two. I haven't seen the second Solari Priestess card, so I have a feeling I'm going to get hit by a Comet here. So that is a little scary, but I've got double swains, which is decent, I guess. But yeah, as you can see, uh, our Ballistic Bot has done pretty much nothing except give us discard fodder because I'm trying to bank as much spell mana per turn and be efficient with my mana by not using it, if that makes sense. But here, if they play Comet here, I am in a little bit of trouble. If they go Comet, I can... Now, here we can see the uh, the Swain, the leveled up Swain into Ignition. We'll be able to stun Eclipse Dragon, but I don't know if that'll be great. So here I'll just play Swain. They can't play Supernova. They've never invoked anything that could invoke a Supernova, I think, unless I'm forgetting something. But they can Comet Swain. If they Comet Swain, that's fine, because I have a second Swain. I don't mind it. If they pass, obviously I pass too. Get the Swain stun. Yep. I feel like that is a mistake there, in all honesty. I feel like they should probably Comet the Leviathan. Not just because I have a second Swain in hand, but also because uh, Leviathan's just going to slowly kill them. And this dragon doesn't mean anything. I can just chump block the dragon all day. Like, I have two chump blocks. I have House Spider and Tavern Keeper. And if it gets bad enough, I can chump with Draven and Ballistic Bot, but I probably won't have to. So good luck, opponent. I really feel like my opponent is on the, I need to get a little bit of extra damage in. Um, here, I could set up a, a Ravenous Lock. I don't have one. My opponent doesn't know that. I could go Spinning Axe, throw away the Ignition, block here. I won't do that. I'll just block like this, I think. And now I'll just play Swain and hope they have nothing else. But they might have something else. Swain into Ignition and see what else they have. If they just pass here too, after I play Swain, I will pass myself as well and not even attack in. But yes, as you can see, we are trying to get our late game set up. Swain plus Leviathan, if we ever get it set up where they're both on the field and we start the turn and start getting stuns, we should be in a great position. Because even if my opponent passes and then plays an elusive, I can always play Ignition and now even have Death's Hand too as backup. So here I'm just going to um, pass again. I could play the Ignition, but I want to try and maybe... Make my opponent think, wow, they're not doing anything. I'll pass too. And if they play a lot of units that are small, basically that can't block Fearsome, I'll do an Ignition Death's Hand turn. If they still do nothing, I might also just develop a second Ballistic Bot for more stuns too. That's also pretty decent. But for now, 
I would like them to pass myself, in all honesty. If they pass, I'm happy. If they develop the board, I'm happy. I'm happy pretty much no matter what they do here. The only thing I'm scared of, I would say, is... What is this? Sky's Descend. Sky's Descend is the one thing I am afraid of. That is not a card I was really expecting. I wish I had my Scorched Earth right now, but I can do something... Hmm. No, never mind. I was thinking, like, I could stun this? No. No, 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 no. I'll just let this go off. I've got a nice uh, turn here, I think. I'll just attack him like this. Um. And you know what? I'm going to start with this, too. I'm going to attack in, and I have Death's Hand here, too. I might even try to level up Draven as well. Now I can just go for the burn plan of burning them out with Leviathans, Ballistic Bots, and uh, the Death's Hand, I guess. Just the, the little chip damage I've got every now and again. Okay, and so they have no life, no uh, mana left, so I can do some crazy stuff here. So we'll do that. Uh, I'm not going to attack him with a 3-2. The 3-2 just gets blocked by a 2-1. Honestly, though, I'm fine with that trade. I think I would be fine if they block here. They will definitely block with the 4-5 into Draven. And then I will play Death's Hand here. If they just take the Draven hit, though, like this. Or do this. Um, I'm also fine with this, I'd say. I think I'm going to try to level up Draven. Or at least, I'm going to do this. This is going to seem a little weird. I'm doing this play to threaten a Draven level up. Level up Draven it is not a thing you should actively be going for, but I feel like by doing this, my opponent might get scared of a leveled up Draven and maybe play around a leveled up Draven. Okay, so they can't play um, Skies Ascend. That's 13 mana now because they have one dragon. They don't have any Pale Cascades in the deck anymore outside of the ones from Diana herself. So I don't really see how they're going to kill my Leviathan. Again, they have dealt with the Swains, but again, like I said earlier, I when I said I thought it was a mistake to not kill Leviathan. How much damage has this Leviathan done? I think it has done nine damage now. I think this is the third turn it's alive. Um, again, I will just pass. I want to make my opponent do something here. If they pass again, I just win with the ignitions. They could technically use um, the dragon to kill one of my ballistic bots, play Comet to kill Leviathan, but then I just play a bunch of stuff and open attack. So I'm not really seeing how my opponent comes back from this. I think this is game. I think the only way they can come back is... Well, they didn't do it, but to play a big invoke unit... Okay, sure, it's Comet, whatever. I think they needed to play a big invoke unit. I'm also going to start doing these two to make these uh, ballistic bots bigger. I'm going to discard the spinning axe. So now my opponent's probably scared and thinking, what if they... Ooh, I will kill that. I will very much kill that. I will also... So now I'm going to definitely Death's Hand this. I'm going to do this. I want to find, like, maybe a Mystic Shot. If I have a Mystic Shot, I can kill them. Now, here I could play Trump Womp and play a bunch of Mushrooms, a bunch of Puff Caps, and try and kill them that way. I will Death's Hand this, though. I don't think I can give them a Star Chart into a... If they get Star Chart into, what's it called? The Messenger and draw deeper into the deck and find Star Shaping, I think that is a way I lose. But again, like I was in here, just going to go and do this now. Play Ignition, guarantee the one damage. I'm even going to play this Mushroom Cloud because I have another Chump Womp if I want Discard Fodder. And who knows, I might even get extremely lucky here. 
But yeah, open attack here first. They gotta deal with two things from on the board from their hand. Gonna be a little tough for them. Uh, let's just do it like this. So they have to block these two first. Instead of being able to try and get a value block on Draven. So good luck, opponent. I am a little scared, though. If they go and play Star Shaping, how much health... Okay, there it is. How much health do they save here? So they have seven health. Oh, they're just giving up, it seems. Okay, GG opponent. Yeah, they had no blocks that could have saved them there. I still dealt seven, even if they blocked the most damage they could have. And that's the death. All me. And maybe those other guys. Whatever. Okay, welcome back to another game. I felt like getting in another game, and this time we're against another meta deck. Today it seems like we're going against meta decks in Trash Masters. Uh, we're against Zoe Aurelian Soul. I've done a deck tech on this video, I believe, as well, maybe about a week ago. Uh, in this matchup, I still, uh, the mulligan is the same. I still want to find, um, Dravens and early game removal for early Zoe's. If my hand was better and I had, like, a Mystic Shot or something, I might consider keeping Scorched Earth. But because I don't have anything early to deal with, uh, Zoe, I want to find something to deal with a turn one, turn two Zoe. But yeah, Scorched Earth would have been nice to have keep to have kept because of uh obviously Plaza. But again, we can't deal with it. Okay, Egghead Researcher, they're playing the greedy version, it seems. I'm not a fan of this version. I feel like this version is too slow. That means they're probably not playing Starry Scamps. Uh this is looking a little bad for me. I don't have anything to actually do on turn three, which is a very big rarity. And you know what? Scratch that. I just top deck to Draven. And now my opponent probably will just play a um, Plaza. They don't have Plaza, it seems. Either that or they want to develop the board a little bit more, but a little bit slow here. This is a great hand now. That top deck Draven really just turned this hand from an okay hand with good removal and a decent mid game into a great hand. I now have some spell mana every turn to threaten... Um, Threatened removal spells. I actually have a curve to curve out with. It's great. This is a little bit awkward, though. I don't actually have anything to do with this chump wump and these mushrooms. I'm probably going to have to play one of these mushrooms. I will start with this chump wump, though. So this is a little interesting. I will trade here. So I think I'm going to start by doing just this. I think this is a good play. Now, I'm trying to think of my next turn as they could play Comet here. That's a really nice draw. Uh, if they play Comet here, I'm fine with it. If they play uh, the Lifesteal Sun guy, I'm fine with that. I wasn't really expecting that in all honesty. I'm just going to attack in like this. Yeah, I think this is a good attack. And it seems they didn't even want to... Uh, I'll just do this and... I'm trying to think like what I want to get rid of here. And I think I'll get rid of... Um, I think I'm going to get rid of... Arachnoid Sentry. No, I'll probably get rid of um, Mystic Shot. I don't know. This is a tough one. Scorch Earth is also nice to get rid of. I think it is Sen... No, I'll get rid of Mystic Shot. Tribeam's not a terrible thing to get rid of either. This is a tough one. This is very, very tough. But uh, I think it is the Mystic Shot. Time for the money makers. This does kind of... By showing that I'm getting rid of a Mystic Shot, my opponent probably realizes I have at least another one or something similar. Also, Draven levels up now, so that's always nice. This is something you almost never see. My opponent might give up because of that huge turn. They knew I had those Spinning Axes, though, so I thought they might have a plan, and I was trying to think to myself, what for one mana can you do here? 
This is a turn where I might actually just throw away these spinning axes. Um, I think here I'm going to actually just stun this. And play House Spider. I could rummage, but I think I'll just attack in here. Get a big board and just open attack. Because I want the axes. I need the axes so I can have a um a good um rummage turn. I'm not gonna attack in with Swain. It plays into um it plays into Pale Cascade here. I'll just attack like this. Sure, they can do some value blocks here, but again, I don't care. This guy even knows I have a spinning axe, so they probably have Pale Cascade here, so I'll just let this trade. Again, really, I'm just trying... I just want to rummage here. At least one rummage, because I really want to set up this Leviathan. So that's probably an Aurelian Soul, so that's a little scary. Mystic Shot and Flock. Interesting. Not amazing. Um, I think I'll do it again. If they have a turn 8 Aurelian Soul, I can't actually deal with that. Okay, Leviathan might actually be enough to deal with it. And I will just do this here. I could now kill the Silver Sister as well. Which is definitely a viable thing, and I'm going to do that. Mostly because I don't want to waste my mana... I think by doing this turn like this with all this card drive just done, that's actually not a terrible draw or a terrible hit, I'd say. Now I can just play Leviathan. Sure, I can't actually um do anything. Yeah, I was going to say, they can't play Aurelian Soul, but they just did. Because I can now develop Leviathan. But I guess they don't care about that. Your favorite star. So I'll just play Leviathan here. When victory is at stake. I could also level up Swain. I will actually just take seven. I will I will chump here and take the seven. And I will ravenous flock the one one to level up Swain. So I can stun this and open attack in. And Trevor Snooze Bottom actually gives me a huge, huge what? 5-8 here? That's crazy good. So I don't really know how they're going to stop this. The only out I can see here is maybe Hush into Judgment. Which I can actually deal with too. And I think they're actually going to burn a card here. Again, like I said earlier, this is why I don't like the um, version that doesn't play Starry Scamp. I think it's too slow. The version that plays Egghead, in other words. They never were able to catch back up on those tempo losses. They never even played Plaza 2, which a Plaza deck without Plaza is always a sad thing. You need ways in a Plaza deck to uh, help the deck out for when you don't draw Plaza. It's why you play things like Single Combat and Concerted Strikes and Judgments. But yes, as I was saying, if they have Hush, okay, they're going to heal. I doubt they can heal enough here. I've got a bunch of damage. Like... Yeah, you got to heal another nine, but you can't. So they're hushing here, but they're still dead, I believe. Okay. They're still dead, I think, yeah. Between the Mystic Shot and the boat itself, they were not living there. So yeah, another win. Great deck. Damn, I'm good. Okay, welcome back from those games. Um, I feel like those were... Those two games were very good examples of how to play this deck. Uh, as you saw in our first game, we kind of played more of the control style, sitting back, letting our opponent do things and answering whatever they did or trying to mitigate all the tempo they had and were trying to create and then eventually winning with Leviathan. Uh, in our second game, we were uh, more of a mid-range tempo deck ourselves. Uh, as you saw... Um, that turn where my opponent played Aurelian Soul, they had only one mana, they couldn't really do anything else. I went and just removed a bunch of their board, leveled up the Swain, got the Swain stun off, and won with the superior late game. Not superior late game, but the strong late game of the Leviathan plus Swain. Uh, we also saw that um, 
Tribeam gave us a huge tempo swing. Like, sure, Trevor Snooze Bottom was, I'd say, I'd argue it was kind of a high roll to get Trevor, but pretty much any three drop would have been great there, except for like the very weak ones, which I can't even think of. Maybe like Giddy Sparkleologist, I guess. But yes, um, as you see, and as you saw, and you probably know of if you've played decks similar to this, like Draven Ezreal, uh, the deck plays both the mid-range role and the control role, depending on our matchups. Uh, I feel like you need to know what your opponents are playing, what the meta is, and what other decks are, and know whether you are more of the aggressor or the uh, non-aggressor and playing the control, and when to stop playing control and when to go for a win, because we have a surprisingly large amount of burst thanks to the one Captain Farron, the Leviathan pings themselves, and our Mystic Shots. Anyway, though, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Very fun deck. If you're playing a lot of against a lot of Lee Sin and you're losing a lot against Lee Sin and you're playing Ezreal Draven, try this deck out. It plays pretty much almost the same as Ezreal Draven, except, like I've said numerous times, we got the late game of Swain and Leviathan to try and stop that. Just again, be careful. The Equinox, I never ran into a single Equinox there, even though I played against two Zoe decks in a row, actually. Neither of them got Equinox because, again, like I said, I mulliganed four early game interactions, specifically Mystic Shot and Death's Hand, to try and uh, stop these Zoes. And my, neither of my opponents got early Zoes anyway. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the deck. If there are other decks you would like to see me play and talk about, I would love to hear it, and I would love to hear any recommendations. Um, if you've been playing this deck and you're having a good time, uh, I, I am happy for you and would love to hear about it. Um, if you think there's any improvements I could do, I would also love to hear it down below. If you just enjoyed the video in general, though, of course, I'd love it if you could leave a like or a comment down below. And if you guys want to keep up with the Legends of Runeterra content, uh, of course, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to catch me and watch me playing some Legends of Runeterra, you can always go and check me out on my Twitch TV account over at Twitch TV slash Zeniton. I play pretty much every day. Uh, all kinds of decks such as this, sometimes very good decks that are very, very good in the meta like this, sometimes meme decks that are very bad but fun, uh, something like a Spooky Karma or an Anivia Rekindler deck. Anyway, though, with that all said and done, thank you all again once more for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And until I see you guys in the next one, uh, bye.